I want to say a special hello to third, fourth, and fifth grade students. And this is a very special message, message, excuse me, just for you. So I know next week we have a really big thing coming up with our STAR testing. And I just wanted to send a message to you that I have been sending to students over the years. So this is actually an activity that I used to do when I was a third grade teacher and even did it into my principalship when I was working with groups of kids. So next week, for some of you, you might be feeling a little bit anxious, nervous, or a little bit of un unsure of yourself uh, going into the STAR testing. But I'm hoping that this book that I'm going to read to you and the activity that I'm going to suggest your teachers complete give you a little bit of a boost so that you can feel confident as you go into next week's testing. I'm not sure if you know this, but there has been research that has been conducted on kids and taking tests. And here's something that I was really astounded by when I heard it. Did you know that kids score 10 to 15 points higher on a test just by believing that they can and that they are capable? So here's to helping you score 10 to 15 points higher by giving you a little boost of confidence. I want to begin by reading one of a classic book uh, and one of my all-time favorites. This book is Knots on a Counting Rope, and it's written by Bill Martin Jr. and John Archambault, and it's illustrated by Ted Rand. Tell me the story again, Grandfather. Tell me who I am. I have told you many times, boy. You know the story by heart. But it sounds better when you tell it, Grandfather. Then listen carefully. This lady may be my last telling. No, no, Grandfather. There will never be a last time. Promise me that. Promise me. I promise you nothing, boy. I love you. That is better than a promise. And I love you, Grandfather. But tell me the story again, please. Once there was a boy child. No, Grandfather. Start at the beginning. Start with a storm was crying my name. You know the story, boy. You, you tell it. No, Grandfather, no. Start. It was a dark night. It was a dark night, a strange night. Your father and mother and I were safe in the Hogan, and the sheep were safe in the pen, when a wild storm came out of the mountains, crying, boy, boy. And your mother said, I hear it in the wounded wind. A boy child will be born tonight. Then what happened, Grandfather? I rode up the canyon fast to bring the grandmother. It is not a good sign for a child to be born without a grandmother's blessing. Was the wind still calling for me? Yes, boy, it was whipping up sand and sharp as claws and crying like a bobcat. Boy, boy, were you afraid, Grandfather? I was much afraid. How much afraid? Heart pounding afraid, boy. Then what happened, Grandfather? Just as I was born, tell me that part. It was strange, strange. Just as you came forth and made your first cry, the wind stopped howling and the storm was over. And the night became as quiet as soft falling snow. The grandmother took you up in her arms and said, he will walk in beauty to the east, to the west, to the north, to the south. He will walk in beauty forever. And I was born strong, wasn't I, Grandfather? No, you were not strong. You were sick and frail. We thought you would die. But I didn't, did I? Tell me about that, Grandfather. All night you lay silent with your eyes closed. Your breath was too shallow, too weak for crying. And you carried me out to see the morning, Grandfather. But I did not open my eyes. Tell me that part. Two great blue horses came galloping by, and they stopped, Grandfather. They stopped and looked at me, and you've raised your arms to the great blue horses, and I said, see how the horses speak to him. They are his brothers from, from beyond the dark mountains. This boy child will not die. That is what you said, isn't it, Grandfather? Yes, boy, that is what I said. This boy child will not die. The great blue horses have given him the strength to live.
And that is when you named me, isn't it, Grandfather? After you smiled your first smile, we had the naming ceremony, and all the grandmothers and grandfathers were there. And you named me Boy Strength of Blue Horses. It is a strong name. Did I need a strong name, Grandfather? All children need a strong name to help them grow strong. And I grew strong, didn't I? Yes, Boy Strength of Blue Horses. And each day you are growing stronger. You are learning to cross the dark mountains. I have already crossed some of the dark mountains. There will be more, boy. Dark mountains are always around us. They have no beginnings and they have no endings. But we know they are there, Grandfather, when we suddenly feel afraid. Yes, boy, afraid to do what we have to do. Will I always have to live in the dark? Yes, boy, you were born with a dark curtain in front of your eyes. But there are many ways to see, Grandfather. Yes, boy, you're learning to see through your darkness because you have the strength of blue horses. I see the horses with my hands, Grandfather, but I cannot see the blue. What is blue? You know, morning boy. Yes, I can feel morning. Morning throws off the blanket of night. And you know sunrise. Yes, I hear sunrise in the song of the birds. And you know sky, boy. Yes, sky touches my face like lamb's wool and I breathe its softness. Blue is all of these. Blue is the feeling of a spring day beginning. Try, try to see it, boy. Blue, blue, blue is the morning, the sunrise, the sky, the song of the birds. Oh, I see it, blue. Blue is happiness, grandfather. I feel it in my heart. There was a sweep of blue in the rainbow, boy, that morning your horse was born. Oh, tell me that part, Grandfather. I could not see the rainbow, but I could still feel its happiness. I awakened you, boy, during the night, remember, just before the foal was born. And you said to me, come, boy, Circles is ready to foal. The colt will be yours. It was a long night of cold rain. And then we put a blanket over Circles, Grandfather, to keep her warm. Yes, boy. As the sun came through the clouds, the foal was born, and a rainbow danced across the sky. It was a good sign, boy. And I named the little wet foal Rainbow. You have trained her well, boy. Rainbow is smart, Grandfather. Like you, she's good at remembering. Rainbow is my eyes, Grandfather. She takes me to the sheep, wherever they are, and when I'm ready, she finds the way home. No one thought you could teach her to race, boy. But I did, Grandfather. Every day, day after day, we followed you along the trail, and you let me hold the reins. You traced the trails in your, went, in your mind, boy, you, both you and Rainbow. Yes, Grandfather, we learned the trails by heart. Up South Mountain to Granite Rock, down the steep shortcut of Meadow to Blue Flowers, then straight across the Red Flats to Lightning Split Tree. Then down the switchbacks to the Canyon Trail and on around to the finish line. I learned from Rainbow when to turn by the pull of her neck and by counting her gallops. Now tell me again about the race, Grandfather. It was a tribal day, boy. You and the other boys were at the starting line, but you pulled back. I was afraid, Grandfather, until you called to me. Tell me again what you said. I said, don't be afraid, boy. Trust your darkness. Go like the wind. And I leaned forward on Rainbow's neck. I grabbed her mane tight and I said, go, Rainbow, go. I could feel the pushing and crowding and galloping thunder all around me. Rainbow and I went twisting and turning, galloping, 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 counting the gallops, remembering the way. And what did the people say, Grandfather? They said, who is that boy riding bareback, racing with all of his heart? And you said, that is boy strength of blue horses. He and his horse are together like one. Yes, boy, that is what I said. But I didn't win, Grandfather. No, but you rode like the wind. The wind is my friend, Grandfather. It throws my hair back and laughs in my face. I finished the race hot and dusty, sweat dripping from my face. And you were smiling, boy. 
I wasn't afraid, Grandfather. I could see the dark every turn of the race. Rainbow and I knew the way. You were crossing dark mountains, boy. Tell me again what you told me then. I like to hear it over and over. I said, boy, strength of blue horses, you have raced darkness and won. And now you can see with your heart, feel a part of all that surrounds you. Your courage lights the way. And what did the grandmother say? You tell me, boy, I know you remember. Yes, I remember, Grandfather. They said, this boy walks in beauty. His dreams are more beautiful than rainbows and sunsets. Now, boy, now that the story has been told again, I will tie another knot in the counting rope. When the rope is filled with knots, you will know the story by heart, and you can tell it to yourself. And then I will grow stronger, Grandfather? Yes, stronger. Strong enough to cross the dark mountains. I always feel strong when you are with me, Grandfather. I will not always be with you, boy. No, Grandfather, don't ever leave me. What will I do without you? You will never be alone, boy. My love will always surround you with the strength of blue horses. So... I'm sure that some of you have already figured this out, but it doesn't explicitly say in the book about one of the boy's challenges. But have you figured that out already? Okay, well, I'm gonna let you know in case you haven't. The boy in the book is blind. He cannot see, and so he has to see in other ways and find his strength in other places. So at the end of the book, we see that Grandpa has tied knots in a counting row. So what I have done for you guys is I'm giving your teacher just simple pieces of yarn for you to create your own counting rope over the next few days. So your teachers are going to be reviewing strategies and just in your mind, I know that you're thinking about all the great things that your teachers have taught you how to do to cross the dark mountain that is the star test that's coming up next week. So whether that has been a reading teacher that taught you to go back and find evidence to prove your answers, that would be a knot to put in your counting rope. Or maybe you're a fourth grade math student and you need to remember to follow the rules every time you do a math word problem. That would be a knot in your counting rope. And on star test day, if you choose to, you can wear that little rope as a bracelet or just have it on your desk, just as that gentle reminder that you have everything that you need to cross that dark mountain. And for those of you that are already feeling confident that you're gonna cross the dark mountain of star and you're gonna do well, that is awesome. And I want you to spread that love and that encouragement to all of your friends. But just know that I am already so proud of what you have accomplished. And I hope that you have enjoyed our book today and that you have an opportunity to create your counting rope to give you that extra boost of confidence on test day. Thanks guys for listening to my story. See you soon.